Hello and welcome to another episode of Revealing God with Travis Perrier. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for your feedback on the first episode. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, I realized it was super long and I apologize. I have a tendency to ramble on a little bit, but um, what we're going to do going forward is each episode I'm going to break up into hopefully around 10 to 15 minute segments. That way I could still cover what I wanna cover, but I know you guys are busy and you may not have 45 minutes to sit down and watch something. And so I want to try to break it up into different segments so that you guys are easier able to consume it, if that makes sense. Able to consume it easier, how about that? All right. Anyway, so I had a great question from a very dear friend of mine, um, and it wasn't one that she posed to me, but I saw it, and she's having troubles um, basically understanding Jesus and whether he was just a prophet or is he really the Messiah? Is he even a real person? How can he be God and human? And, and all the different things that come along with Jesus and our human minds trying to grasp such an incredible concept, right? And so what I'd like to do is start out with, what does the Bible say, right? I feel like that's always the best place to start. So let's start there. Um, my sister Nicole said that it was too hard to read these on the screen last time. And so let me see if I can make this bigger. I know I already made it bigger once, but let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger for her. And that way, if you guys are watching me on your phone, you have that, uh, you'll be able to read the scripture with me. Anyways, John 3.16, probably the most popular verse out there. You see the signs at football games, or you used to anyways, before... Um, we started taking God out of everything. And uh, anyway, so it says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And so basically that's saying that Jesus is God's son. Okay. And all you have to do to have your spot reserved in heaven is believe in Jesus. Okay. Pretty easy. John 1, 14. You'll notice a lot of these are from John. I feel like John had a really good connection with God. Um, he did a lot of writing in the Bible, and including Revelation. And so I just, I feel like he had a good connection with God. So we'll be using a lot of John here. Um, John 1, 14. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So here, every time the Bible refers to the Word, it also refers to God because God is the Word and the Word is God. That's how we know that everything that God tells us is true. Because God does not lie. God does not deceive. God does not um, trick us. That's the devil's work. God is true. And so his word is him. And so the word became human and made his home among us. So he is saying that Jesus made himself human. So God made himself human. God's son, Jesus. And he came to earth. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. We've seen his glory and the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So John was able to see Jesus walk the earth. He was able to see Jesus crucified and rise again. And so he saw these miracles happen. He saw the miracles that Jesus performed uh, all the time. He saw them firsthand. So you are what you are reading when you're reading the Bible, especially majority of the time in the New Testament, that is 
not only just the story, that is these people's first hand account of what went on during that time. And to me, you can't get a better witness testimony than a first hand account. Once you get into other people telling the story, then you get stuff that that gets blurred and, and whatnot. But these are firsthand accounts of what actually happened. So once again, referring to Jesus as God and Father's one and only Son. John eight fifty eight says, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was even born, I am. So you'll see in the Bible many times God refers to himself as I am or the great I am. And that is basically saying um, that he is God. He always was, is, and always will be. He is the great I am. And so that is what Jesus is saying right here, that he was around long before Abraham, who is basically the, the father of um, the Jewish, considered the father of the Jewish faith, um, and honestly, of Christian faith and of Muslim faith, they all stem from Abraham. And so you have all three of these faiths coming together in one point. What's the dividing point? Jesus is the dividing point. The Jews don't believe he was the Messiah. The Christians believe Jesus is the Messiah. So they're basically taking him as at his word. And the Muslims basically say that uh, Jesus was a prophet. Now, I know there's probably more complications to the whole division of, of the uh, religions and whatnot, but I'm not here to talk about that. That's the basics of it, right? And so Jesus himself is telling us through John, I am God. And it's kind of for people who aren't Christian or people who are new to Christianity, who are struggling to try and understand the concept of God, um, because you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You have all three entities which are God, right? But it's so hard to put our heads around it because, you know, they see everything. There's no timeline for God. So he sees what happens yesterday and tomorrow the same as he sees today. And so it's hard to grasp our human minds around it. And the whole, the best humanly example or for our human brains anyways, that I could think of to explain the Trinity of God is an egg. You have the egg shell, the egg white, and the egg yolk. All together, they're an egg. Individually, they're part of an egg. So they're still the egg, right? So when you cook eggs for breakfast, what are you cooking? Are you cooking the shell? No, you're cooking eggs. If you're cooking egg whites for breakfast, you're cooking eggs. If you need egg yolk to put in a recipe, whatever, I don't know. But you're still adding egg to it, right? So God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Egg shell, egg white, egg yolk. I think that is the best way I've ever heard it explained to me. So let's move on. John 14, 6. And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And so Jesus came down, and we'll see in the next scripture as well, that uh, Jesus came down as a mediator between us, right? So before Jesus came, there was the old covenant. Once Jesus died on the cross, there was a new covenant made with God, between God and his people. Okay. In the old covenant, you would sacrifice animals, you would burn incense, different offerings to God to atone for your sins. The new covenant, Jesus Christ himself became that sacrifice and that offering to God for our sins. So in that one act of love, Jesus Christ covered each and every one of our sins completely. And so, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting goosebumps on that one. <laughs> uh, so he's telling us there is no other way to get to God now except for through him because it's a new covenant. We're no longer under the old rules. We are now under the new rules. 
Finally, 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man, Jesus Christ. So again, he's saying, so there's only one way to get to God. So we have God up here and he cannot be around any sin whatsoever. He can't be near it, right? Think of oil and water, how they separate just automatically. You pour, pour oil in the water and they separate immediately. That exact That's exactly how God is with sin. He can't be around it, right? So Jesus is our mediator between God and us, okay? And that's because Jesus took on our sins and he wiped them clean forever. And the Father made him holy. And so Jesus is now up here. He's our mediator. He is the one that um, reconciled us, right? He fixed our relationship um, with God. And so that is what he is saying there in First Timothy. So hopefully some of that helps. Uh, like I said, these are firsthand accounts um, in some of those instances, the words in red, which are the words of Jesus Christ in your Bible. So I wanted to put them in red here. Um, those are firsthand accounts as well, but that is, that is Jesus Christ saying these words, right? And so to me, there's no other, no better proof. If you go to a murder scene, right? And you have witnesses around, there's going to be scientific evidence around. Yes. Um, they are going to back up the story. But one of the first things they look for is witnesses immediately. They're like, okay, who saw this? Who, who is a firsthand witness of this account? And these stories in the New Testament written by Matthew, Mark, John, um, Luke, these are first firsthand witnesses of Jesus Christ and um, his times. And so to me, there is no better no better proof than firsthand witnesses. Now, next episode, or not next episode, but the next part, we're going to talk a little bit more about the scientific aspect of it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we will uh, we'll dive a little bit deeper into that, and it's going to be crazy. It's You guys are going to be... I don't know why the next... The next part of this episode hasn't been blasted all over TV, except for the fact that this shows you that Satan is in control of our media because spoiler alert, uh, years ago, the Ark of the Covenant was found. It was found. So for those who don't know, the Ark of the Covenant has been missing for a long time. And so we'll talk a little bit about the Ark of the Covenant being found, the circumstances it was found in, the incredible stuff that was found on it and around it. And uh, so we'll talk about that later. But anyways, let's finish up in prayer. Lord, Father, we thank you for this day, God. And I thank you for my friends here viewing us, viewing this, God. We want to pray for this world and pray for our country, Lord. We realize that we are in the end days, God. We see the signs around us, Lord. We see the earthquakes. We see the pestilence. We see the wars and rumors of wars, God. We've seen the the uh, signs in, in the heavens, which we'll do an episode on that as well. Lord, but we know that we're in the end times. We see that evil is just running rampant on this earth, Lord. We pray that you come back quickly. Lord, how long must we wait? How much more should we have to endure before you come back, Lord? But until then, Lord, I ask that you continue to help us bring light into darkness, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you continue to, to expose the truth and uh, reveal the lies, God, or expose the lies and reveal the truth, whichever way you want to say it. Um, Lord, that's, that's, that's what we want to do. We got to wake people up. We got to let them know that you are God, that Jesus is King. And there is only one way to heaven, and that's through you, Lord. So please help us spread this message, God, far and wide. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this episode.